owned by the multidisciplinary company Northern Rascals. But hi, how are you today? Hi. Yeah, we're good. Yeah. We're really good, thank you. We're really excited to be a part of this. Um, yeah, we're, we're doing well. Yeah, cool. How Would are you? you like to? <laughs> oh, I'm good, thank you. Would you like to give a bit of an explanation as to who Northern Rascals are? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're, um, we're a multidisciplinary arts company based um, in the north, in Yorkshire. Um, so we're predominantly dance based, but we dabble in different um, mediums as well. Um, we work a lot with um, communities and um, different target groups to co-create our work. Um, so we really have a massive um, focus on outreach and how we can work with these audiences to, to create work that's authentic and accessible. Um, but yeah, we've been going for about three years now. Um, we work predominantly in Leeds, York, Barnsley, um, yeah. Cool. So um, this is, for people who don't know, this is Sam Ford <laughs> and this is Anna Holmes. So, correct? Yeah. Um, uh, so I looked up your website and it said that two pieces started all of this. Um, yes. Could you explain how you guys met and what, what created Northern Rascals? Um, so we both, we both trained together at Northern School of Contemporary Dance mm -hmm. um, and then we, we all, like, always worked together mm -hmm. in training um, and then we both graduated and went both our separate ways just to do other things mm -hmm. um, and then after about a year um, I was injured. Yeah. And then you had just finished what you had uh, been doing. Just finished contract, yeah. Yeah, and then um, we basically just got together again and we were just like, oh, we really fancy like working for ourselves for a little bit, like uh, start creating something of our own. Um, so we basically just got together, uh, applied for this uh, little commission in um, Kendall. Kendall in the Lake District. And then we got it and that's where it all started from there. Yeah, it's kind of snowballed from yeah. there, didn't it? Cool. Um, I noticed that your projects tell like really interesting stories. Um, Sunnyside, uh, you can tell us a bit more about it, but from what I've gathered, it's telling the story of what a lot of people can relate to at the moment mm -hmm. is this overwhelming sense of a possible, like impossible future. Mm -hmm. uh, could you explain more about this film and what inspires your projects? Yeah, so um, our projects always seem to be narrative based really yeah. or they're, they're not just performances of movement like they always have like a deeper narrative connection behind them um, whether it's like all about biographical experiences of our own or our dances um, or the surrounding environments environments that we created them in um, so the film is actually under the banner of so Sunnyside is a larger project that we've been working on for about two years um, and um, we've done loads of different researches it's come in different forms um, and that basically follows a narrative of um, a young boy who is um, not, not really coping well with his mental health. Um, his future seems impossible and far out of reach and he can't really see his place in the world. So that's the story of, like, of the original Sunnyside. Um, and then when lockdown happened, we were meant to just start the next phase of research going into more of a bit of a creation for it. But obviously that was all taken away from us. But We'd already created all these connections with these young people because we'd worked with um, probably loads of young people across the loads. UK already, taking their stories of how they experience mental health and their connection to home. Um, and we didn't really want to leave these these like amazing relationships uh, in the lurch. We felt like they deserved to be nurtured and supported in this time, which is more difficult than ever. Um, so this is where Sunnyside Through the Lens came through. So we worked with these young people again and more new people that we've met um, to experience their, uh, look at their experiences of lockdown and isolation. And the themes are really exactly the same to what we were looking for the stage show really. So um, feeling like your future is, is difficult to understand and difficult to make sense of and being trapped in a home environment and what home and who and what home means to you. Um, so this is really what Sunday Side Through the Lens has gone from. Yeah. Mm, we're really interested in how artists are coping throughout lockdown. Mm. It's one of the big topics surrounding Rural Fest this year. Yeah. Um, how has lockdown been for you two personally? <laughs> <laughs> up and down. Yeah, it's it? been up and down. It's mm -hmm. been 
what is it the the roller coaster ride like yeah it's definitely yeah. like there's been days when we're literally just like pulling our hair out <laughs> yeah i mean because we do work for ourselves anyway like we're kind of used to periods of like having to work um uh, from home and like, having to self-motivate ourselves so that hasn't been that different but it's more the sense that we don't know what we're going to be working for i feel like we've been kind of lucky that we have we've had a project in lockdown to work through but it's now looking into the future and seeing what sports going to be available and there for us in the next next year two years like our company has like consistently gone up and but then with that there's new ways of learning there's new ways of reaching people like if anything we've learned that we can still connect and create and empathize with people through screens and we're all still there. We're just a bit separated. Um, so yeah, it's been a learning curve, hasn't it? Definitely, definitely. I mean, <laughs> yeah, trying to find new ways of kind of like being creative, like throughout the day as well. Because yeah. I think like, I would say what, like the first week or so we were kind of like, didn't know what was happening. Maybe even longer than that. Maybe. We don't even know time anymore. Yeah. But <laughs> it was very, it yeah, just all like every the day, like, like, yeah. yeah. Merging day becomes Thursday. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And time's just gone really quick, but try not to freak out about that. How are we? Well, I'm yeah. not. <laughs> Would you say that dance for you has been, or creative outlets during this time has helped you? Because a lot of people have turned to dance and creative things online. Uh, there's TikTok trends becoming popular, all those dances. Would you say that it's it is helping you i think creative outlets have definitely helped us haven't they massively so. um i mean as we're that like i think when it's your medium and when when like when dance is a thing that we've trained with for so long it it's been nice to have a bit of a, a bit of a breather from that as well mm. we've been able to find different outlets so we've yeah. been doing a lot of writing we've been d doing different like filming like we've been playing with different mediums to like complement our main uh, outlet um but yeah, I can see how important it is for everybody. Like my my sister's now my she's much older than me is now obsessed with TikTok. <laughs> and it's like, Can you teach me this dance. And she's actually joined in some of our improvisation classes yeah. and she's not a trained dancer at all. And she's absolutely loved it. So it's yeah, I think it, I hope that people will go forward and see how important creativity is to get you through the day and to help you find an outlet for the strains and pressures in your life. Um Yeah, I think just like creativity gives you that nice challenge yeah like it is something to challenge yourself something mm -hmm. to work on and but something that you will still find enjoyable yeah and that helps your mind to keep ticking instead of like become this like mm. flat line stuck in the same like uh, circle same routine the yeah. whole time like mm -hmm. i definitely think it, it helps a lot to have mm. something to work on yeah, yeah definitely leading on from that I was going to ask you why you choose to merge such different disciplines together, um, like opera and a swimming pool. Could you explain <laughs> that project? Uh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, so that project actually started uh, when we were training. Mm -hmm. We did it as a, it was kind of like a co collaborative project where um, we had to collaborate with some artists outside of our like school, outside of our training. Um, and we already knew these opera singers and we were just kind of like, oh, this could be quite a cool little mashup, like mm -hmm. might work. We did. And then when we did it for the, uh, during our training, it, it, it was okay. It, it was just like, it was a yeah. good, like learning curve, wasn't it? It's a good, yeah, a good experiment. Yeah. And then when we, after the, uh, two P's commission, which was the first commission, we then decided to actually revisit that and just be yeah. like Do you know what that project could work with a little bit more time a mm -hmm. little bit more like focus on it it, it could be something nice yeah. i think yeah it, it kind of came about as well because of the space so we did it in bramley baths where i once skived a lesson at, at, at my training institution <laughs> and went, went for a swim there instead and i was just blown away how absolutely beautiful the building was so that piece was really inspired yeah. by the surroundings and i don't know if you've ever like heard singing or music in a swimming bath it's in the acoustics are incredible um mm. so i don't know it just kind of like pieced together didn't yeah. it and it just worked and it was something that the baths that the manager of the baths at the time was really interested in and um, bringing arts to unusual spaces um, and it's just one of those wonderful, like one-off projects that might might not ever happen again, but was was really special for the community and for everybody yeah, involved. Yeah. 
yeah opera, yeah we're just a bit random maybe <laughs> yeah. i don't know we like different things and we think yeah. that like there's no reason why you can't fuse anything really mm. as long as you put the effort in and like you work out the kinks most things will fuse together mm. Mm. what's the motivation and inspiration behind continuing to do these like projects i think each project that we do we feel as if there's a reason for it to actually exist it's not just mm. oh we want to make this so mm -hmm. we're going to make mm -hmm. it i feel as if like sunnyside came about due to like a lot of like a lot of uh things happening in like anna's hometown of like hebden bridge mm -hmm. yeah it was more like yeah like that was like a personal response yeah. to something, wasn't it which we felt as as if there needed to be more awareness about yeah. like i think a lot of it is to do with kind of creating awareness on something yeah yeah definitely and each project seems to kind of like inspire the next even though they're all very different when you put them our like portfolio is very different and <laughs> varied but actually like the through line from all of them they're very they are very connected in the way that the ideas have progressed to the next to the next um they all they all do link and they like we won't go into big details of how they all link because that's what our little secret is. <laughs> but it they, is. Um, oh. they link in some way. <laughs> they do all link in some way. Um, and some of the ideas are just really random and have just come to us, you know, at really random times. Like, oh, let's just explore this in the studio. We've tested it a few places. And then the audience have like suggested what they've seen through it. And then we've gone with that avenue of like, to shape yeah, it. Yeah, that is. Yeah, uh, which that's, that's what happened with our, the mesmerist and it with the children's one. Um, and in some of them, we've had the really strong idea to start with, and then we've brought the audiences in to help create it with them. Um, but yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's a lot of different like influences coming from mm -hmm. all different places. And we just feel as yeah. if these, these pieces are wanting to be made. Hmm. Is it a secret, the link between all of them? <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. It, yeah, we're, we're, yeah, it is. It's, is that something people should be looking out for maybe in the future? It is something it is. they could be looking okay. out for. Sam's going to tell Okay, that, that sounds interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's it, like as long like just knowing that, that's fine. Like, mm. that's fine. Okay, oh, I won't ask you anymore. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> looking for the future is all I would say. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned you have improvisation classes and things like that. Um, how can people get involved with Northern Math Schools? Yeah, um, all of it is through our social media now, isn't it? So we're at Northern Math Schools on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, but Instagram and Facebook are our more prevalent um, pages that we use and through our website mm. as well. So our classes are every Monday, they're 10 to 11. Um, and they're just, they're open for anybody really. Like we tested them on every, from professional dancers to those in training to people who haven't really moved before. Um, and our classes have a real focus on well-being and not being judgmental and just letting yourself have that hour to yourself in your busy week, in your busy day, just a time and space to breathe. Um, yeah, so you can book on them through messaging us um, on Facebook or Instagram, or you can email us at northernrascals at gmail.com and we'll book you a space. And the classes, cool. are, they're just guided. So yeah. they're not, they're not, there's nothing like too hard to learn or anything. It's literally however you feel at that time, mm. you want to react to the guidance that we're Definitely. giving you. Mm. And is it for all ages? Yeah, uh, we'd say from maybe about 15, 14 up, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, just so that you have some, some more of awareness of, of how you can, it's not a children's class, it's for okay. younger people, um, teenagers upwards. Yeah. yeah. It sounds and like it, you've been really busy. Yeah, yeah we, we have. have. We have. But Which has been good, it's kept us like... It's, mm. We've kept ourselves busy as yeah. well, haven't we? Yeah, we have. Um, yeah, especially like, like now... We've, we've actually had the time to work on like the, the things that we needed to work on. Now we've like actually got the time to actually put stuff in um, to to really keep building it. That was our yeah. aim for this year. So maybe actually lockdown actually worked in our favor. <laughs> <laughs> What's a week been like in lockdown for Northern Math Schools? Like, could you give us like a week in the life of Northern Math Schools? Um, I would say maybe, I. We would get up Monday morning, mm -hmm. 
we would write down a whole plan of like and schedule like what Sometimes we're going to on Sunday if we're what, feeling yeah, better. Yeah. If of like what we want to achieve this week, mm -hmm. like what things we know we need to get done, what mm -hmm. things uh, need to be planned, and all of that. Um, we we'll normally start off Monday getting really stuck into it. <laughs> each day it might <laughs> get a bit less. Get a bit less. But yeah, each one's varied. It depends if we're like editing, mm. if we're doing the, something physical, if we're teaching the class, or if we're like exploring new movement, or if we're more in like the editing phase for it, or an application writing phase. So the, the days and the weeks can differ. Yeah. But the things that are staple is that we always plan um we always have a to-do list uh, we always do some form of exercise um well try don't we yeah and we drink nice coffee and eat good food <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good but yeah, yeah i think yeah it totally differs like each um like there were some days yeah during like the filming process where the week didn't finish for like 10 days did it we mm. were just like constantly working con like the whole time and then there were some days where it was just disney plus day wasn't it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I can relate to that. <laughs> so what drew you into Rural Fest? Um. Well, it, it's just, it just seemed like a really good, a really good opportunity, a really good chance yeah. to, um, to reach new audiences during lockdown as well. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're all for bringing and making our work accessible and, and offering it to to, to as many audiences as possible and often like actual the good thing about this digital stuff is that anybody can feel comfortable and watch it from their own home and not feel like they're I feel like a lot of people can be feel like they're not welcome in the theatre doors or they feel like that world isn't for them it's too mm -hmm. arty whatever but we love bringing the arts to to on your doorstep and what's more on your doorstep than having it in your living room yeah um, and I think it just came at a, like a good really a good great time because we we were just like in the process of finishing our short film so and it's just like, oh, we've got something mm. suitable that we can offer this. And it's not something that we're having to kind of like fit around. Like it literally mm. fits perfectly for the whole festival. Yeah, so. for once the timing was perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> can you describe what we're going to see this Sunday? Yes. So what you're going to see is um, it's a short film. It's about 10 minutes long. Um, that was it was commissioned by Northern Broadsides, which is um, a, a Northern theatre company. Um, and part inspired by Leeds and um, part, not inspired, Funded. part funded by Leeds inspired too. Um, and basically we held an online intensive um, during lockdown. So it was over three days and we had about 40 people from across the UK aged between 16 to 25. Um, so they came and each morning we did class and then we did like workshops, whether it was film, spoken word, uh, movement workshops. And then we went and set them off on creative tasks that explored their experiences of lockdown. Um, and then we've used this material to inspire the short film. Um, so something that's really was like, we got loads of amazing responses, didn't we? Amazing yeah, stuff, Fantastic like... stuff, which we shared on our social media. So please do check them out if you want to see the actual responses from the young people. Um, but one thing that really stuck out for us was these rites of passage that people were missing. Um, stuff like graduation, prom, mm. driving tests, that long summer when you've worked so hard. Mm -hmm. I can often, relate to this. <laughs> yeah. It's devastating because looking back from somebody who's like experienced all of those things, they are like massive pivotal parts of my memories of being a young person. And they're, they're the memories that I hold dear in times like this yeah. of, of being with those people. Or, um, yeah. And, and, and there was a real sense of kind of like grieving for these moments that they've missed and the people that they yeah. would have celebrated it with. Um, so that's what the film explores really that's yeah. the main narrative we actually did like a writing task where you wrote a letter to the person that you missed the most during lockdown and one person one participant wrote this one to uh his best friend who is going to go to prom with and then they were maybe going to go to college and go their separate ways and now like these special moments that they would have had together have been kind of taken away and Oh, it was really, it was really touching, and that's, yeah, it was, it was. That's it was really beautiful. based the narrative of the the short film. Yeah, isn't that's it? yeah. So yeah, yeah. That sounds, yeah, that sounds really great. I'm looking forward to watching this. Good, <laughs> good. Yeah. Um. So after lockdown, do you kind of have an idea as to the future for what you're going to be doing, <laughs> or is it all just completely out there at the moment? Um. Well, we we 
it's so after the lockdown hopefully if, once everything's back to normal mm -hmm. um we have another stage of creation for um sunnyside, sunnyside the stage piece mm -hmm. um which hopefully we can get into the studio soon yeah. with our dancers again and uh, start creating that and then we are applying for a load of different stuff at the moment aren't yeah we? So really the creation of Sunnyside was like our our aim for the end of this year um, but we don't want to do the piece dis, a disservice by not being able to if the dancers have to socially distance and stuff like that like it, it's a very physical duet between two guys so mm -hmm. it, it's kind of seeing we have the we do have the partners and we have the funding in place it's just seeing when's the right time and when's it safe for everybody to to continue yeah. it mm. um and then also seeing that with theaters like who knows what state theaters are going to yeah. be in and especially yeah. a smaller company they're going to want to sell seats um so they're going to be booking these shows that sell out instantly so for maybe for us it's it's again thinking of new ways that we can bring our work forward to people um but that's okay we yeah. make, it yeah. will be so adaptable after this it's all right <laughs> yeah <laughs> A big question has been uh, venues for artists, like music venues, how audiences are going to be seated. And it's yeah. made people think of some really creative ways of um, showing different mediums. Yeah. But one idea I heard the other day was mm -hmm. having a drive through, yeah. uh, sort of like a cinema experience. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you could possibly incorporate outside venues into your performances? Yeah, definitely. 100%. This is something that we're we're really looking into for the next stage because mm -hmm. because of theatres like yeah. they're not going to be able to buy all of this all of the shows yeah so we are really looking into kind of like bringing it to the outside somewhere which mm -hmm. can have a lot of space a lot of like a, a, is able for the audience to social distance still. yeah um, and also these spaces can bring something really really nice and something new to the yeah piece. definitely. And it'll again, it'll reach those audiences that are afraid of the theatre door yeah. or put off by uh, going to the theatre. And we've had experiences like the Bramley Baths, the Dearest Daisy performance was obviously in a community swimming baths. Um, we did like a, a 26 day tour last year, didn't we, of The Mesmerist, which was in parks, um, which was amazing. <laughs> and like festival settings and like we did light night. So it was in the centre of Leeds. So mm -hmm. actually like, we do have a lot of experiences of performing in usual venues. And, actually there's something so brilliant about performing outdoors and like it's always live because you're reacting to people around you and like it just brings another element to the yeah. characters whereas you can lose that in theatre theatre can quite quickly become uh, quite disengaged for the performers because they can't really see the audience so sunny sides needs that really intimate element uh, mm -hmm. almost like you sh you're watching but you shouldn't be watching um so yeah I think out like the drive through thing was sounds yeah, amazing. It was the guy in LA who did that first or something. Yeah. Mm. Well, it sounds like there are quite a few possibilities to make this exciting. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of negatives to lockdown, but I think it's going to shape creative arts and an even more creative thinking out of the box kind of way. Definitely. So, yeah, you've you've actually answered all of my questions now. We have about four minutes left, so. If there's anything I haven't covered, would you like to discuss something? Is there anything we haven't covered? No. Um... Hmm. I think I think your questions are brilliant. Yeah. They're very thorough. It's... Yeah. It pretty much got to the heart of everything, I think. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, we're we're just really grateful that um, Rural Festival is sharing and and having our having our film and having our input in it and we really hope that everybody enjoys it yeah um, cool. yeah and we would love like if if anyone um feels a certain way towards the, uh, the film or has any, any like feedback, feedback please message us mm. like we love like as much feedback as possible yeah. this is the way that our pieces develop and evolve all the time because mm -hmm. we we always want to hear back from the audiences they yeah. shape our pieces like that is one of the big things that we like to do is create our create our shows with the audiences yeah like you you can how can you ever relate and uh, expect an audience to relate to your piece if you've never like Involved gone them in it exactly mm -hmm. yeah i think that's really important as well audience participation 
and it, it gets that more intimate feel between the audience and the performer. Yeah, they can have a connection then, can't they? Or they can. Yeah, like it a... breaks down the barrier from the stage to the audience. Definitely, exactly. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's been great talking to you, and I'm really excited to see your film now on Sunday. <laughs> Thank you, Kate. Yeah, okay. for it to get be shown. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Gosh, like yeah. you know, we've been working on something for ages, and it's like, yeah, you know, we want to release it. I know, I know. Yeah. We've watched watched it so many times now, <laughs> back and forth with the composer and the uh, yeah. um, editor. Which one? So yeah, a ma massive thank oh, you. Yeah. To shout out to. Howell Creative and Jonathan Deering, who are our filmmaker and composer, like they were really a massive part of it. It was a massive collaborative process. So, yeah, um, yeah it's not just us two, like they should be sat here with us yeah, as they well. Should, they, they were amazing. Yeah, they were. Um, but yeah, thank you, Katie. And thank no you. Problem. Thank you for answering all my questions. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you.